Hello and thanks for tuning in to Me and My Golf TV. You've joined us by the side of the fifth green here at the Asprey. The sun is shining and it's go low. Yes, and today we're going to be showing you how to select the correct club around the green to help you go low. Let's take charge of your game. All right, then it's time for Go Low. This is where we answer questions on your game to help you go low. Yes, make sure you get involved. Go to the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram today and post your questions on this week's topic. We could be answering your question and helping your game, so get posting, guys. Absolutely. So today's topic is the short game. So we've had a question from Daniel Lemon. This is through Facebook, and this is actually uh, one of our new subscribers as well. So guys, if you don't already, hit the subscribe button. These videos are for free, and it will help you interact with us a little bit more on those videos. Now, Daniel has asked, um, Love the videos, thank you, by the way, for that. He has said that on short game, he knows that people can hit seven irons, six irons, eight irons, nine irons, pitching wedge, sandwich. You can hit those different kinds of shots, and obviously they will have an effect on the ball, lower loft, rolling more. But when do we play those shots? I think that's a really good, a really good question. Something that everybody struggles with, Pierce. It's like, well, when do I use my seven iron? When do I use my pitching wedge? When do I use my sand wedge? And it's, it's more and more apparent when we take our clients on the golf course, they don't know when to use the right club and that has a big effect on the score. Without doubt, without doubt. So what we've done, Daniel, is we've actually sit out, uh, we've actually put out, sorry, should I say, a situation here where we've got three different golf shots. So shot number one is literally three yards from the green and then 20 yards up the green. So from the front edge of the green to the flag is 20 yards. So what, a 23 yard shot in total. Shot number two is also on the fairway, but it's actually 10 yards away from the front of the green. So it's kind of a 30 yard shot in total. So 10 yards from the front of the green and then another 20 yards yards on. Now shot number three is actually in the rough a little bit and it's actually very similar to shot number one distance from the hole but the carry is now 13 yards to get to the green. So we actually, although you're the same distance from the hole, because of the angle you've got to go over a lot more rough grass. So this should give us a good representative of every shot we want to do. So we're going to start on this one here and then move to the other shots. So shot one, three yards to the front edge, 20 yards to the green, what do people normally do? Or what's the bad thing this that people is, I mean, do? This is a very simple, I mean, people can put it from... Oh, yeah, that's actually the first a thing to do. A little bit of fairway to go over, so it's always best, I think, if there's something to go over, to, to chip it. Now, most people use loft pierce. They get to the situation, they go, right, sand wedge, I've got to hit it up in the air, land it next to the flag and stop it quickly. And do you know what? It looks nice when you pull it off, but it's just not that consistent. Do you know what? I think the biggest theory with that is, I think that a lot of people when they practice their chipping, they get their sandwich out and they hit lots of chip shots and they become very proficient with that. Yeah. But actually a proficient sandwich chipper, as opposed to an average six iron chipper, which we're going to do in a moment, the six iron average chipper is actually probably a better chipper consistently. Yeah. And you know, we always say, Pierce, like we said, we want to land this golf ball couple, two to three yards on the green. Now yeah. to do this, the six iron for me, if I hit the six iron on the front of that green, it will then have the right amount of roll to get it there. Whereas if I landed my sandwich or pitching wedge on the front of the green, yeah. it's just not going to roll there. Yeah. It's much easier to land the ball here, much less distance to cover than actually to try and land it 20 yards away. Definitely. I can do that much more consistently. And if I can do that more consistently, I'm going to get it closer. And you'll see throughout all of these shots, Daniel, that we're looking to achieve that two to three yards onto the green. Pitch it two to three yards onto the green, and then from there, let it run out. So in this yeah, case, the six sign is perfect. So Andy, let's have a go with this. Okay. So six iron again, just sort of get that ball rolling up. Hardly any height here. It's all about just getting it on that right spot and letting the ball roll up the slope. And the good thing with, with nice shot, the good thing with the six iron, if you thin it a little bit, where we catch it a little bit in the middle of the ball, it will go low and it will run a lot. Well, that's what happens when you hit a good one. So actually you get a little bit more forgiveness with club. That wasn't bad. That was pretty good. Distance perfect. I could have been a bit more right Let's down. test you. Let's go, to, happy with that. let's go to shot two. Let's go to number two. Right, and shot two, Andy. So now, obviously, if you were to hit a six iron from this position, yep. you'd be landing it short of the green. Yep. Now, that's maybe okay on a lynx grass or when the grass is very short, but actually, we want to have the same mentality of, again, going for that two to three yards onto the green. We can land it on the green. We know the green is going to be a predictable surface. We know what's going to happen. We don't want any dodgy bounces, should I say. I do. I mean, the, the grass here at the Asprey is pretty impressive, so if you get a chance for you, then it's well worth playing here. But, yeah, let's land it on the front of the green. Now, this is, as we said, it's 10 yards to the front of the green, yeah. 20 yards then to the flag, so we're talking 13 yards where we're going to land it, so it's kind of 50-50, so with a 9-iron, that generally is a good rule of thumb, to actually go 50 yards in the air, and then 50 yards run out. Yes, okay, so 9 iron the choice of club here, again, I'm just going to play the same shot here now, slightly longer swing, but 2-3 to three yards is my landing spot, I'm not even really looking at the flag, I'm 
focusing on landing on the front of the green, and again letting that roll do the work out to the to the hole there. I think you landed that about where you wanted to. That was very nice. It's going to be. Is it closer than the six iron? We ran a bit past that one, but not bad. Still go in the green, just be slick. They are fast today. <laughs> so again, it just shows there. You know, it's uh, you know landing in the right spot there. A little bit of a pull, but distance control still not too bad. I've got a chance to save my path. This one's going to be harder. This one's definitely going to be harder. Go and play number three. Right then, position three, Andy. Thirteen yards to get to the front of the green. Six or seven yards then past. You've got to go high. It's a slightly harder shot, but it's a similar distance to shot number one. But because I've got a little bit more green, or sorry, a little bit more to go over, this is where I do need the sandwich. So this is yep. where we do use lock. Can't do it with a six iron or a nine iron, so I've got to land this two or three yards on. It'll roll a little bit, but the loft will obviously control it. So this is this is near a sort of 75% in the air and sort of 25% on the ground. Nearer that ratio. Okay, come on, let's get this closer, shall we? Come on, man. You got to get. You got a bit of room there. Not bad, a little bit just short. I landed that probably, well actually that probably two yards short there, maybe three yards short. So I landed on the fringe of the green there, a little bit longer and it would have been perfect. But do you know what? It's okay, I'm still gonna- Do you know what, the good thing is they may not have been his best shots, but, but this is really important when you're practicing as well, Daniel, is make sure that you're aware of the results. So don't just hit shots and just and then pick the balls up. Hit the shot, be aware of the result. I think if Andy would have landed that two yards onto the green, that would have been the perfect club for him. So all of these are pretty much the right clubs for him. Definitely, yeah. So it just shows the club selection. Get it right. It's going to help you get close as possible to that play. Make sure you work at it. So there you have it. Hopefully that gives you an idea on how the different shots can obviously affect the ball flight. Best thing to do from here, make sure you go and practice and learn from that. Right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Post your comments down below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Yes, make sure you subscribe as well. Hit the subscribe button below for more videos every single week and to be able to interact with us. And also, guys, check out me and mygolf.com website and get your free seven-day trial today. Loads of great content on there. And we will look forward to seeing you tomorrow for my swing analysis. Check that out, guys. It's a good one.